Jesus and we see like what's happening in a biblical like, text and how it sheds light on Jesus like, and his gospel. Like, Let's jump in. Like, uh, Who so, is Jesus? Uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is a question yeah, Jesus uh, poses uh, to his uh, disciples uh, in Matthew 16. Uh, According uh, to the uh, disciples, uh, most uh, people uh, think of uh, Jesus uh, as uh, a prophet. Uh, but Jesus wants to know what uh, the disciples uh, think. Uh, Peter uh, declares uh, that uh, Jesus uh, is uh, the uh, long-awaited uh, Messiah uh, and uh, the Son of God. Immediately after affirming Peter's confession, Jesus tells them that he must die and rise again. Not only will he go to the cross, but he announces that all who follow him must die to themselves as well. After this, Jesus leads his three closest followers up a mountain, and there he transfigures before them, becoming as blinding as the sun. The figures of Moses and Elijah also appear, representing all the law and the prophets. Peter suggests that they build tents for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Peter realizes this is a Mount Sinai moment all over again, and just as God's glory moved into the tabernacle at Sinai, perhaps these three small tents would be a fitting residence for these three men as well. But God's voice interrupts, calls Jesus his beloved son, and tells the disciples to listen to him. These words on the mountain echo the same words Moses spoke to Israel when he said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. It is to him you shall listen. When the disciples look up, Moses and Elijah have disappeared and only Jesus is left. Everything that Moses and Elijah represented in the Old Testament called the law and the prophets has now culminated in Jesus. Unlike Sinai, God no longer needs a tent to hold his presence and glory. Instead, the fullness of his presence is found in the person of Jesus. Jesus affirmed Peter's declaration that he was the Messiah, but Jesus knew that being the Messiah meant dying, and the good news is that Jesus willingly took up his cross to bring God's kingdom into our world. Now he calls us to carry our own cross as citizens in that kingdom. But this is not a punishment, it's a blessing. Jesus says taking up our cross and following him is the only way to salvation. In this context, taking up our cross means being willing to die as Jesus will die. It is a wholehearted belief in and devotion to the fact that even in death, God wins. This is not faith in our own sacrifice, but in Jesus's. For in his death, there is life. In his cross, God wins. Finally, we see the beauty of Jesus's transfiguration. In this story, we get a glimpse of the true glory of Jesus' deity. He is God himself. And this glorious God declares to us before and after this story that he is going to die. The immeasurable grace and mercy of God is displayed not only as Jesus becomes a living tabernacle as a human, but also as he becomes the ultimate sacrifice offered in that tabernacle. The Son of God in the flesh died for us to fulfill all of God's plans. That is amazing grace. So I pray that the Holy Spirit would open your eyes to see the God who wins, even in death, and may you see Jesus as the one who bore his cross so we might have life when all we deserve is death.